5 Fascinating Old Age Conspiracies Number 5. What year is it? Today is September 29th, 1719. Wait a minute, or 156,103,200 minutes, to be exact. We live in the great era of 2016, not 1719. What's going on here? Dr. Hans Ulrich Niemitz might be able to explain a little bit. He came up with a very strange hypothesis in the early 90s. He called it the Phantom Time Hypothesis. In essence, the paper claims that the early Middle Ages, between 614 to 911 AD, never happened. Instead, the 297 years in between were either added to the Gregorian calendar by mistake or deliberately. The main reasons behind this conspiracy theory are there are many falsified documents by the Catholic Church during the Middle Ages, multiple other gaps in history, including the fact that there was apparently nothing built in Constantinople between 558 AD and 908 AD. And of course, the biggest reason this theory has any merit is the real discrepancy in time. To make things easier, here is a brief history of timekeeping. In 45 BC, Julius Caesar reformed the Roman calendar. Now, the calendar had 365 days, 12 months, and a leap day every four years. But the math was not perfect. The Julian year was 10.8 minutes too long compared to the tropical year, or the time it takes the sun to return to the same position in the cycle of seasons. By 1582, the 10.8 minutes had accumulated to a 10-day discrepancy between the tropical year and the Julian year. That is when Pope Gregory VIII decided to improve on the calendar and fix the 10-day difference. Thursday, October 4th, 1582 was followed by Friday, October 15th, 1582. The Gregorian calendar is also not perfect, but it would take 3300 years to rack up a 1-day discrepancy. But the Julian calendar had been used since 45 BC, right? So the supposed 1627 years that passed would have accrued a 13-day discrepancy, not a 10-day one. The 10-day error that they fixed would have taken 1257 years. That is around 300 years of unaccounted for time. The main struggle with this theory is the why behind it. The best theory is that Otto III, a Roman emperor, was born sometime in the 600s. He modified the calendar so he could serve in the year 1000 because he saw it as an important thing connected to the Christian religion. There are no great reasons to just add 300 years of empty history and until someone figures it out, this will remain a conspiracy theory for the ages. Number 4. King Arthur's Grave King Arthur was the legendary leader who saved Britain from the Saxons during the 5th and 6th century AD. His existence is highly debatable, and the legends surrounding him are even harder to explain. The stories of Camelot, Merlin, Excalibur, and the Knights of the Round Table can be written off as folklore, uh, according to most people. But in 1136, Geoffrey of Monmouth wrote his famous Historia Regum Britannia, the history of the kings of Britain, where he talked about the amazing feats accomplished by King Arthur and the legend was born. In the year 1190, monks of Glastonbury Abbey had dreams and visions about the mythical king. They eventually shared their experience with King Henry II and then Henry revealed a shocking old family secret. The body of King Arthur was buried in their monastery. They excavated the area and found the supposed remains of King Arthur. King Henry and the monks gained untold fame and fortune when they displayed the skeleton for visitors. When this story is told, it is rarely mentioned that those same monks claimed they had also found the body of St. Patrick and St. Dunstan in the same area just a few years prior. In addition, the monastery was in financial troubles, so that gives us motive. This leads many scholars to believe that there was a conspiracy between the monks and King Henry II to lie about the bigger-than-life discovery. The remains were, of course, lost during the 1500s, and there is no way for modern scientists or historians to prove the validity of the monks' claims. In more recent news, Graham Phillips, who is a self-professed historical detective, brought new theories to life. He claims that the body of the king is located in Bass Church in a spot known as the Birth Hill. 
And when you look at it from the air, he kind of has a point. The place does resemble a tomb. Number three, the Treaty of 1213. Holy ownership, alliance, land, what's going on? In the most simplified terms, the Treaty of 1213 was a treaty between Pope Innocent III and King John, in which King John pledged the lands of England and Ireland and any other British colonies or conquered lands to the Pope and the Vatican itself. The treaty is commonly referred to as the Holy Alliance, and it definitely came with scrutiny. Wealthy barons all over England took up arms and made King John sign the Magna Carta. In modern terms, it would be comparable to the Bill of Rights, but there was only one problem. The Pope was very much against the Magna Carta and annulled it not even a year later. Only two people made the treaty, and only those two people could have dissolved it. They both died before doing so. So, technically, to this day, the treaty stands. Conspiracy theorists claim that since the Holy Alliance is still law, the Vatican Church owns every country that was once a colony of Britain. And yes, that includes the United States of America. So when you pay your taxes next year, know that the money is going to the British Crown and the Vatican, apparently. Number two, the Holy Grail and the Holy Blood. The origins of the Holy Grail story can be traced back to a 12th century French romance book. The Holy Grail is a chalice used by Jesus Christ during the Last Supper, but that's not what makes it holy. Joseph of Arimathea, an important person in the Gospels, and the man who donated his tomb to Jesus, used that same chalice to collect Christ's blood during his crucifixion. Since then, it has been rumored to be an object of immortality and immense power. So what's the conspiracy here? Well, the Holy Grail has been hidden and protected by secret societies since the death of Jesus Christ, and mere mortals are left in the dark about its true power or its existence. Since the 12th century, the theories surrounding the Holy Grail have gotten drastically more grandeur. The book The Holy Blood, The Holy Grail suggests that Jesus married Mary Magdalene and she had his children. Now those children moved to modern-day France and intermarried with the noble families there. This lineage is protected by a secret society called the Priory of Sion. The author also claims that the word Grail from old texts is a deformation of Sangreal, meaning royal blood. So this was all due to a mistranslation. What do you think? Is it possible that there is a certain group of people out there that share the blood of Jesus? The Illuminati. All the riches in the world are worth nothing compared to the power of the all-seeing eye. The enlightened ones, as they are called, control everything. There is not a single dollar printed or a soldier killed without their word. Every conspiracy, every forgotten truth or remembered lie can be summarized as they did it. And now who are they? The only way to find out would be to become part of their society because without inside information all we have is speculation